Hello everyone, and welcome to Rebooted MCU Side Projects, an idea that was created by two of my Discord mods, Lightboy and Pokin, to tell additional stories that occur within the Rebooted MCU timeline, but do not impact the main Rebooted MCU story. What started as a small idea has morphed into a collaborative effort which has brought members of the JTVids Discord server together to write stories about characters that they love and are passionate about. Today, I have the honor to share with you the first few episodes of two of these projects, Rebooted Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., written by Lightboy, and Rebooted Howling Commandos, written by Pokin. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe to the Rebooted MCU Side Project's YouTube channel and join the Discord server if you want to pitch your own show or movie idea and have a chance to be featured on the channel. Anyways, I hope you all enjoy the video, and Lightboy, over to you. The first episode of Rebooted Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is Episode 1, Pilot. At Target Technologies headquarters, we see employees from Target Technologies are at work when the top floor of a nearby building explodes. All the employees can be seen fleeing out of the building when we see Spymaster, played by Scoot McNary, along with Cobalt Man, played by Ray Park, Blizzard, played by Edward Norton, and Absorbing Man, played by Stone Cold Steve Austin. This group identifies themselves as the Raiders and walks out with a bunch of weapons. This is filmed by Daisy Johnson, played by Chloe Bennett, an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. After Anton Triplett, played by B.J. Britt, recovers a Chitauri Neuralink from a black market dealer named T. Van Chat, played by Aiden Turner, the S.H.I.E.L.D. deputy director Maria Hill, played by Colby Smulders, interviews him for a new assignment. Agent Phil Coulson, played by Clark Gregg, who is officially dead, walks in alive, assigns Triplett level 7 security clearance, and reveals the team's first mission to investigate the robbery committed by AIM. Coulson also recruits Agent Melinda May, played by Min Na Wayne, who originally retired from field duty. Coulson introduced Triplett to Agents Fitz, played by Ian DeCastrucker, and Agent Simmons, played by Elizabeth Henstridge. Coulson also mentions Daisy Johnson as part of the team, but she's out on a separate mission. Coulson then talks about the mission to investigate the robbery. Coulson, May, and Triplett head to Target Technologies where they analyze the destroyed building along with any tech they recovered. They learn that the company specialized in making gun-like weapons. Daisy meets up with Coulson, May, and Triplett and tells them about the robbery that just occurred. Daisy mentions that the group is called the Raiders. Coulson thought the robbery was committed by AIM. Daisy mentions that this group seemed less focused on what they were finding and grabbed whatever they found, unlike AIM. This gives Coulson the realization that the crime that was committed was not by AIM, but rather another organization. Coulson asks Daisy Johnson for the footage she recorded, and he notices that one of the members talks about a microchip that goes with the gun produced by Target Technologies. This gives the group a small hint at where the Raiders plan to strike next, but they are unsure. The team regroups back at the bus where they talk about the technology they found. Fitz is given the gun to analyze and he notices that the guns require chips in order to be used. Fitz asks Coulson for one of the guns used at S.H.I.E.L.D. and compares both weapons. He notices that both use a certain chip which is produced by a certain company which turns out to be Vista Corp. With this information, Coulson, May, Daisy, and Triplett head to Vista Corp to warn the CEO of the imminent danger that is approaching him. The CEO, who's revealed to be Jeff Zorick, is not happy to see S.H.I.E.L.D. as he got into trouble with S.H.I.E.L.D. in the past. He angrily yells at Coulson about how S.H.I.E.L.D. does not treat his company well and that they are lucky they are allowed to use his technology. During his outburst, an explosion is heard from the floor below. The Raiders show up and start attacking the employees and stealing the chips in the company. Zorik goes into a panic state, worried about how this will affect his company. Coulson, May, Daisy, and Triplett head to the lower floor where they encounter the Raiders. Coulson aims his gun at the group and orders the group to stand down, but Spymaster pulls his gun and repeats the same line back to Coulson. A battle ensues as each member of the Raiders fights each member of S.H.I.E.L.D. Coulson tries to disarm Spymaster, but Spymaster is able to deflect every move he makes. Spymaster tells Coulson that this is not a battle he's going to win. May takes on Absorbing Man, 
originally getting the upper hand, but Absorbing Man touches the ring on Mei's hand and turns into that metal. He then swings his Wrecking Ball into Mei, sending her flying into the wall. Daisy tries to take on Blizzard, but Blizzard manages to form ice around her arms, nailing her to the wall. Blizzard laughs at Daisy, remarking that if this is what S.H.I.E.L.D. is like, then their organization is weak and pathetic. Triplet takes on Cobalt Man while trying to have a conversation with him. He asks him why he is stealing this tech, but Cobalt Man responds that he hates corporations and wants to see them suffer. Cobalt Man fires a pulse into Triplet, sending him flying. The entire team is beaten down. The raiders walk away with the stolen microchips, but an arrow hits one of them, unleashing a bomb. Far from them stands Hawkeye, played by Jeremy Renner, and Mockingbird, played by Linda Cardellini. Hawkeye asks Coulson if he called for backup. Both of them charge into the raiders, taking them on. In the battle, Hawkeye's arrows damages the microchips, which results in the raiders being told to retreat. The raiders leave the building. Hawkeye and Mockingbird help up Coulson and his team. Zork walks towards Coulson and yells at him for letting boxes of his microchips being damaged and asks S.H.I.E.L.D. for compensation. News spreads about the raid on Vista Corp and videos of the battle surface on the news. Coulson deduces that Spymaster must have sent these videos to the news to make S.H.I.E.L.D. look like a joke. Coulson thanks Hawkeye and Mockingbird for assisting them and hopes to see them again on another one of their missions. May tells Coulson that Fury is not happy about how their mission went and is doubting if his team is going to be able to take on future field assignments. Coulson assures May that his team will be able to properly mobilize themselves to take on any threat with proper training. There is a cutscene for Episode 1 of Rebooted Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. The Raiders regroup in an alleyway and are mad about how their raid went. Spymaster is on his comm talking to someone above about the raid at Vistacorp. The person on the call is not happy about how the microchips were destroyed and tells the raiders that they have another buyer that wants more tech and orders Spymaster to eliminate S.H.I.E.L.D. at any cost. Spymaster ends the call referring to the person on the other end as Master. The second episode of Rebooted Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D is episode 2, Killer Frequency. In a California bar, Red Moon, people are seen partying and having a good time. A disgruntled bar patron wants to play disco music on his guitar, but the bar owner refuses to let him play his guitar. After a heated argument, he angrily leaves. He returns back to the bar with his guitar. He cuts the music that is playing and tells everyone that it's time for them to face the music. He fires sonic blasts with his guitar at the patrons, causing many of them to flee and others being killed. The bar owner pleads to the guitarist to spare his life, but the guitarist fires a sonic blast, killing the owner. The guitarist is revealed to be Johnny Guitar, played by Ross Lynch, a villain equipped with a weapon looking like a guitar. Coulson and his team are called to the Red Moon Bar to investigate what happened. Simmons looks at the casualties and identifies how each of the patrons got their injuries. Simmons tells Coulson that many of the patrons were inflicted by a sonic blast of some kind. Triplet asks Coulson and Simmons where would someone get a weapon like that. Daisy's talking to some of the patrons that survived the attack and many of them gave the description of a guitarist with blonde hair, sunglasses, and a jean blazer. Daisy seems skeptical of the description, but one of the patrons reveals that the guy likes 70s disco music. Daisy meets with Coulson and May and tells them that a guitarist walked into the bar and blasted everyone with his guitar. May is initially skeptical of the explanation, but Simmons' diagnosis of the victims reveals the explanation matches up. Coulson gathers his entire team to go find where Johnny Guitar will strike next. Johnny Guitar meets up with his partner in crime, who is revealed to be Dr. Sachs, played by Doc Shaw. Dr. Sachs asked him if it was true that he blasted patrons at the Red Moon Bar. Johnny Guitar confirms this, telling him that the bar deserves it for playing awful music. Dr. Sachs reminds him that they are in Los Angeles to steal some music records so they can make money. Johnny Guitar understands and they both proceed to drive to a record studio where they plan to steal music records.
Coulson makes his team split up to patrol Los Angeles to figure out where Johnny Guitar plans to strike next. Fitz and Simmons are looking around LA admiring the beauty of the city. Triplet walks by the street and sees someone playing a guitar, but it turns out the guitarist is just a street musician. Daisy is in the shield van, searching on her computer possible locations Johnny Guitar could strike next. Daisy notices a record studio nearby and informs the team about the location. The record studio offers 70s music, which is a location Johnny Guitar could be drawn to. May is close by the studio and notices a car close by the area. She spies on the car and sees Johnny Guitar and Dr. Sachs get out of the car. May calls for backup as she watches both men enter the studio. Coulson, Daisy, Fitz, Simmons, and Triplet regroup and charge into the studio. In the studio, Johnny Guitar and Dr. Sachs subdue the record manager and are packing the stolen records into their bags. The agents charged into the room asking them to stand down. Johnny Guitar tells them that he is not going down without a fight. Dr. Sachs is revealed to have a saxophone that can also blast sonic blasts. Dr. Sachs tries to blast Fitz and Simmons with his saxophone, but May takes a cymbal and throws it at Dr. Sachs, causing him to lose his balance and fall to the ground. Coulson confiscates the saxophone as Dr. Sachs yells at Johnny Guitar to run away. Johnny Guitar, not wanting to leave his partner in crime behind, fires a sonic blast from his guitar at the agents, but Daisy pulls her gun and shoots the guitar, causing the weapon to break. Johnny Guitar runs away from the shop as the agents apprehend Dr. Sachs. The agents regroup at the bus with Dr. Sachs in their custody. Coulson sets up an interrogation room to interrogate Dr. Sachs. Dr. Sachs reveals details about the robbery he and Johnny Guitar were trying to commit at the record studio. Coulson then shifts the topic to the incident at the Red Moon Bar and how he could be arrested for murder if he was involved. Dr. Sachs, scared about going to jail for murder, reveals what Johnny Guitar did at the bar. Outside the interrogation room, Fitz inspects the saxophone weapon and tries to get the weapon to work. Fitz notices a microchip compartment and removes the chip. Fitz realizes that these are the chips made from Vista Corp, but look older. Triplet jokingly asks if he can play the saxophone where Fitz immediately tells him no and that they do not know what this weapon can exactly do. Back in the interrogation room, Coulson asks Dr. Sachs about his saxophone weapon and how he was able to acquire the weapon. Dr. Sachs reveals that his weapon along with Johnny Guitar's weapon were supplied to both of them by the Raiders. He also mentioned that he and Johnny Guitar were supposed to upgrade their weapons, but the stolen microchips from Vista Corp that were supposed to be sold did not come through. Coulson then realizes that the musical duo is connected to the Raiders. Johnny Guitar is seen by the peer with guilt on his face for letting his partner in crime be caught. Johnny Guitar is doing everything he can to fix his guitar. That's quite a handy weapon you got there, says a man under the shadow. Who's there? says Johnny Guitar. Spymaster walks out of the shadow and introduces himself. I found out about what S.H.I.E.L.D. did to your partner, said Spymaster. Spymaster gives Johnny Guitar some upgraded parts to fix his guitar. I got a deal that you will enjoy. Eliminate those S.H.I.E.L.D. agents and I'll reward you with one million dollars, says Spymaster. Johnny wholeheartedly accepts the deal and replies back to Spymaster, telling him, I'm gonna put on a show that S.H.I.E.L.D. will never forget. The next day, Coulson and his team are trying to figure out where Johnny Guitar plans to strike next. Coulson and his team are unable to figure out where Johnny Guitar is. The team feels the ground shaking and hears loud music in the city. The agents have to cover their ears as they hear Johnny Guitar screaming, Good morning, LA! I got a new song I'm dedicated to my partner, Dr. Sax, and I call it Shield Breakers. Coulson and his team get earmuffs on their ears as they direct the bus to the LA beach. The team is greeted by Johnny Guitar on a giant stage playing his guitar. Johnny Guitar sees them and sends out Raider goons to face them. The goons use high-tech weapons against the agents, but Coulson's team is able to disarm the goons quickly. The team then faces off against Johnny Guitar, where they try to disarm him. Triplet tries to fire at Johnny's guitar, but the bullet bounces off the guitar. Johnny laughs at the agents, telling them that he upgraded his guitar. 
Daisy notices the guitar and asks Bits about the guitar design. Bits tells her that the guitar seems to be powered on a battery, indicating that if the guitar is overcharged, it will explode. Daisy pulls out special electric bullets and fires them at Johnny's guitar. Johnny laughs again, telling them that they tried that already, but Daisy tells him to think again, as Johnny's guitar looks at the sparks coming out of his guitar as he realizes what Daisy did. The guitar overcharges and explodes, sending Johnny flying into the sand. More agents are called in to apprehend Johnny Guitar and the Raider goons. Johnny Guitar and Dr. Sachs are put into S.H.I.E.L.D. custody and are taken away. Nick Fury, played by Samuel Jackson, arrives to applaud Coulson and his team for handling the situation. Coulson asks Fury about the Raiders group and how severe the group is. Fury tells Coulson that the Raiders do a good job leaving no trail but now that Johnny Guitar and Dr. Sachs are apprehended, both of them may crack the Raider operation open. Coulson and his team celebrate as they go into the bus. There is a cutscene for Episode 2, A Rebooted Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Spymaster sees what happened on the news and is upset that Johnny Guitar could not take down S.H.I.E.L.D. Spymaster tells Blizzard, Cobalt Man, and Absorbing Man that they have another raid to pull off. Blizzard, Cobalt Man, and Absorbing Man leave with upgrades, but before Spymaster leaves, he sees the S.H.I.E.L.D. logo on the TV screen and pauses the TV screen and punches it, leaving the TV screen cracked as the S.H.I.E.L.D. logo displays. The first episode of Howling Commandos is Crazed Commandos, written by Pokin Pitches. So let's get this straight. We barely got out of there alive, and you want us to go back? Pretty much. The commandos then talk amongst themselves. We're in. A recap of missions begins to play, including Captain America leading an assault with the Howling Commandos, Peggy leading the commandos through a Hydra base, the commandos saving Steve from Red Skull, and the commandos holding off Hydra as Cap and Bucky chase Red Skull up a plane. Dugan? Hello? Dugan? We cut to Sam Sawyer, played by Leonard Roberts, talking to Dum Dum Dugan, played by Neil McDonough. Sorry, what were you saying? Dum Dum Dugan responds. Really, man, I gotta repeat all of that, Sawyer remarks. Since the war ended, Hydra hasn't been the biggest threat. I mean, ever since Captain America took down Red Skull on that plane, we didn't think they'd still be operating. Ah, don't worry. Those numbskulls don't have the guts to attack us again, Dugan chuckles. What? They attacked a prison containing Dr. Arnim Zola and many other World War II Hydra troopers. I need you and your Howling Commandos to come back and take down Hydra's new leader. No can do, Sam. After the end of the war, I'm done leading that team. Hasn't been the same without Cap around. I'm not asking you to lead the team, Dugan. I have someone else in mind. We see Sergeant Nicholas Fury, played by Stephen Lang, walk into the room. Commander Dugan, I've heard a lot about your team. Dugan looks at Fury unfazed. Who are you again? This is Sergeant Nicholas Fury. While you were running around with Mr. Red, White, and Blue, he was in the front lines going head-to-head -head with the Nazis. That is, until he lost his squad. Sam Sawyer takes Dugan and Fury into another room where he shows them their team for the missions. We see Jim Morita, played by Kenneth Choi, Gabe Jones, played by Derek Luke, James Fosworth, played by J.J. Field, and Jacques Dernier, played by Bruno Ritchie. Dugan and the other commandos all greet each other and start howling afterwards. Seriously? This is what I'm working with, Fury tells Sam. The commandos are an interesting group, but they get the job done. Sam then tells everyone that with Hydra getting Zola back, they're going to need their own genius on their side. Everyone, this is Howard Stark. A couple of minutes pass by. Sam looks back. Where's Stark? Sorry, boys. Howard is not here at the moment. We see Peggy Carter, played by Haley Atwell, walk into the room. Ha! He's at a party, isn't he? Marita asks. He's at a party. Well, we don't need him yet anyways. I do need to leave now, though. I have a party to go crash. Fury, could you take over? I got you, Sam. You go yell at Stark for me. All right, boys. Tomorrow we'll be landing on a Hydra base recently found near Camp Lehigh. Chances are they'll be trying to steal some of their tech back. If you do your job right, they won't be successful. I believe Agent Carter knows the rest. The building is scheduled to be evacuated tomorrow at 4. 
You have two hours to get the job done, so I'd suggest getting up early. There goes my plans for the day, Dugan quips. Jaquiz laughs and says something in French. I still have no idea what he's saying, Dugan responds. He says, hey, boys, Peggy cuts Gabe Jones off. Hydra's going to call in reinforcements as soon as they know you're there. We'll be dropping you a couple miles out so you can get the element of surprise. I'll come back and pick you up once the area is cleared. Theory finishes explaining the mission, and we cut to the commandos all in a plan. All right, commandos, time to head out. Remember, this is a stealth operation, so be quiet. Theory explains before jumping out of the plane. Yeah, that's not going to happen, Dugan says before jumping. The commandos all jump out and parachute down safely. Theory and Dugan lead the group to Camp Lehigh, where they find cover and scope out the area. We got three snipers in the trees and soldiers heading to the building. Jones, Marita, you stay back and take out the snipers. Dugan, Dernier, and Fosworth, you're with me. As Fury's team heads down towards the base, we see a gunfight between them and nearby soldiers. As Fury takes out a soldier, he ducks as a sniper bullet passes by. Jones, on the right! The team heads inside the base and starts to clear out the building until they get cornered by a group of soldiers. Marita, we need backup. Head to the eastern side of the building, Fury yells. Sorry, Fury, but we can't move positions. There's incoming trucks heading our way. Dugan whispers something to Jaquiz before they both leave Fury and Fosworth behind. Dugan, what are you doing? Be back in a few. I got a plan. Dugan yells back at Fury. Fosworth backs up a bit after seeing Fury noticeably angry. We cut to Dugan and Jaquiz running through the building until they stop to blow out a wall. Dugan runs out and distracts the soldiers while Jaquiz throws explosives under the truck. Dugan hijacks the other truck and rams it into the part of the building where Fury and Fosworth are being cornered. Fury yells at Dugan before heading out with Fosworth. The team heads out the base as Jones and Marita cover them from the side. The team finishes clearing the building and gets picked up by Peggy in a plane. We cut to them walking out of the plane as commandos high-five each other and celebrate. Another successful mission, boys, Dugan yells. No, not another successful mission. You almost blew the entire building with that truck. What you did out there was reckless. I make the orders now, not you. Maybe I should be making the orders around here. It worked during the war, didn't it? Dugan responds. I was called out here to lead a team, not babysit a bunch of grown babies. I'm supposed to keep this team in check, not let you kill them all in the field. Dugan pauses before apologizing to Fury. Great. Now who wants to get a drink? Dugan smiles as Fury before the screen cuts to them in a bar. Jaquiz and De Niro are dancing as Jones, Fosworth, Dugan, and Theory are sitting at a table. Suddenly, we see lots of cameras flashing and people cheering as someone walks into the bar. Ladies, there's plenty of me to go around. The crowd clears up and we see Howard Stark, followed by Sam Sawyer, walk over to the commandos. All right, what did I miss? Fantastic job, Lightboy and Pokin. To continue following Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Howling Commandos, make sure to check out all subsequent uploads on the Rebooted MCU Side Projects YouTube channel. While all pilot episodes will premiere here on my channel, all subsequent episodes will be appearing on the Side Projects channel, so make sure to subscribe so you can stay up to date with the Side Projects. With that being said, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, Subscribe to both Lightboy and Pokin's channel, and join the Discord by following the link in the description below to pitch your own side projects there. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all next week for Rebooted MCU Phase 5 Part 2 Fantastic Four Arrival of the Inhumans. I'll see you all then.